Uh, start at moment. Okay. So I assume my voice is clear, right? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, I guess uh, we can get it started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another lecture of PNS Modern SSDs. Today, we are going to talk about garbage collection. We actually covered, I mean, partly garbage collection in our previous lectures, but today we're going to, I mean, review that and also see uh, more information regarding garbage collection and challenges and how we can mitigate those challenges. So, so as a very quick recap, we talked about SSC organization, the previous meetings, we talked about SSC controller that has multi-core CPU and we have per channel flash controllers. In SSC, we have a DRAM, which I mean, usually we use for metadata store, like a physical to logical, logical to physical address mapping. And uh, the size of this theorem is 0.1% of SSD capacity. And we will see uh, today more about why. And we also talk about NAND flash chips and the organization of that, that we have, I mean, we have flash chips that they are distributed across channels in packages. And each package we have uh, several dies. And each die we can have, I mean, uh, several planes and each plane we have blocks and pages. We also talk about NAND flash characteristic, which is, I mean, they need arrays before write, asymmetry in operation units. For read and program, we are doing in page, and for arrays, we need to do it in block uh, granularity. And we also talk about limited endurance that is important for flash chip, I mean, for SSA lifetime, and retention loss uh, that we need to do refresh at some point. And we also uh, covered basic NAND flash operations like read, program, and arrays. So for also NAND flash advanced comments in the previous background lecture, we talked about subpage sensing and random data out, which is quite important to reduce the uh, flash read uh, or write access latency. And we also talked about cache read command, which is very important to improve cheap uh, read throughput by overlapping data transfer and page sensing. We cover multi-plane operations that we can improve the throughput of the SSD with that. And also we cover program and array suspensions, which is quite important to reduce the, uh, the overhead of the long write and arrays uh, latencies, because I mean, to reduce the, to provide better fairness and also uh, overall throughput in SSD. So, uh, so as a very, again, quick reminder, in SSD, we have flash translation layer, which is, I mean, called SSD firmware also, implemented in SSD controller. This firmware provides backward compatibility with traditional HDDs by hiding unique characteristics of NAND flash memory. Uh, FTL is responsible for many important SSD management tasks, including address translation plus garbage collection, where leveling, data refresh, and noise scheduling. We are still in address translation and garbage collection. So this is a very simple SSC architecture that we have seen in this slide. We have a storage view at the operating system level, a flat block device. Here, as an example, we have 16 block. And uh, so each of these, uh, they are, I mean, logical block address. And in the SSC side, we have physical block address and the physical page address, as you can see uh, here in this figure. We also have some you know, over-provisioning because I mean, in, in, the, in the host layer, we have 16 logic block address, but in SSC side here, as an example, we consider uh, 20 uh, pages, which is, I mean, over-provisioning. So it's important for performance and lifetime. So, now let's uh, jump to an example. I mean, uh, I'd like to uh, go over the steps with you. So we have this, uh, for example, on request that we have a write in logic block address zero. The size is one, so we want to have a one page write. And the direction is, I mean, uh, specify that is write uh, request and the data, which is A. So FTL basically chose the first I mean, for, for that open block, which is the right point of the, our right request, chose the basically the, the free page and asks, I mean, and, and writes the data in that uh, free page. So here in this example, we are assuming that logic block, logical block size in the host is equal to physical page size. I mean, four kilobytes or four kilobytes. But in uh, most of the time in our uh, 
uh, recent uh, SSDs, logical block size in the is four kilobyte, but physical page size in SSD is sixteen kilobytes. So we have kind of mismatch here that we will see uh, in today lecture how we can uh, leverage fix that problem. Uh, so uh, basically, that's uh, we already uh, written uh, data A. Another request is that we have sequential or large write requests. So we want to uh, start from logical block address four, and the size is twelve. So we want to have a write in twelve uh, block addresses, and the data B to M. So basically, we assume we can we can expect that SSC choose the basically. Uh, block one, two, three, I mean, from address four to 15. But in reality, this is not happen, doesn't happen because, so basically in order to have, you know, uh, at, at each moment, we want to have one single point of write, basically, and we have one open block now, which is block zero. So FTL starts writing in that block zero. And in a basically consequent, uh, sequential uh, manner. So block zero in uh, page one is chosen and basically data from data B is written. And then we write also the rest of data C, D, E until M, uh, so on and so forth. So this is, as I said, because of the active block, which we want to reduce the number of uh, blocks that we can write to them. And also the program sequence constraint that we want to have fixed program order. This is quite important for SSDs that they are using TL MLC or TLC uh, or QLC cells. So now we have this problem that logical block address and logical page address, they don't match. So basically for that, we need to later on when we are receiving a read request for that logical block address, we should somehow realize where we store that. So in order to deal with this issue, we have we need to maintain address mapping information. So in FTL, we have a mapping table, logical page address to physical page address, and we keep the basically mapping table information. So here, for example, in this mapping table, we know that logical page address four uh, is mapped to physical page address one. So whenever we receive a read request, we query this mapping table, and then we retrieve basically the, the physical page address. And with that, uh, FDL access the correct uh, page address and then basically provide data for the host. So now imagine we have uh, some updates in uh, our previously written data, uh, which is uh, address zero with uh, all prime. So in SSC, we cannot do in place write. I mean, we can do, but it's quite inefficient in place writes. We will. Uh, we can also. We will provide some detail regarding that uh, in future lectures, hopefully. But basically, in place write is quite inefficient, and it's uh, very uh, has a huge overhead on the lifetime of the SSC. So we to avoid that, SSC use out of place write, and for that, uh, basically uh, here uh, we we need to find a new free page and write the. Uh, basically the updated value in the in the new page. So here, I mean, so we have open block, block three as a write point, and the, uh, the address 13 is ready for that. And we write a prime in that position. So now we need to basically make the previous copy invalid. So FTL invalidates the previous copy of this address, and then uh, also updates the mapping table. So now logical page address zero is mapped to physical page address 13. So imagine we receive we receive uh, you know uh, several updates to this address. So FTA needs to basically write the new data and updates the mapping table, so on and so forth. At some point, we run out of three pages, and uh, for that, uh, FTA needs to invoke garbage collection. So garbage collection is the task to reclaim three pages by erasing invalid pages. So erase unit, as we know, is block. So if so, we need to choose a victim block that we want to erase it. But that victim block may have also some valid pages. So all the valid pages in that block they should be copied to other free pages, such that we have a victim block with no valid pages, and then we can erase. 
So basically, uh, the performance overhead of garbage collection comes mostly from these copies. For sure, I mean, because we need, you need to also erase data, erase the block, that has also uh, some latency. But the main performance overhead of garbage collection is that you need to basically read and you need to do copy uh, those valid pages. And for each copy, you need to read them, read the uh, page and also program them in a free page. So you can assume here, imagine the, why we have huge overhead in garbage collection. And we have also lifetime overhead because now you need to pose additional rights, which is, I mean, because of, I mean, you, you may have more PE cycle increase. And that's something that people call it as write amplification. So from the host view, for example, your SSD may have, I don't know, a hundred writes up to, uh, until now. But in reality, in, in I mean, internally in SSD, you have more writes due to these uh, also copies that you need to do for garbage collection tests. So in the end, uh, if write amplification, amplification is a factor that shows how much you are doing uh, more writes in addition to the number of rights that actually uh, host the uh, issue. So there are different policies for garbage collection. The simplest one is greedy victim selection policy. So basically we erase the block with the largest number of invalid pages. So for that, we need to maintain the number of invalid or valid pages for each block such that we can see which block has the largest number of invalid pages. So let's see in this example. So here, so in addition to mapping table, we have another table which is called status table. And for each uh, block address, physical block address, we can have uh, three status, free, valid, and invalid for each page, basically, for each page in this uh, corresponding uh, physical block address. So for example, for block zero, we know that uh, the page address zero is invalid in this, uh, in the current situation. But the other three is valid. So for block three, for example, we have one valid, uh, which is address 12, but the rest of uh, addresses, they are invalid. So by looking at this table, we see that basically block three has the largest number of invalid pages. So we chose that, but since we have, it has one uh, valid uh, basically page, we need to copy that to another uh, place. So currently the right point is block four, and you can see that in block four, we have three free pages. So we move uh, this address, I mean, the data M to copy to this uh, free pages in block four. So we need to read uh, address 12 and then program it to address 17 here. And then we can make this uh, block uh, three. Now we, have, now we, we can invalidate uh, the address 12 and now the whole block three is invalid and we can basically erase it. So we also need to update the status table. So for block three, all pages are invalid. And for block four, now we have two valid and two free pages. And also we need to update the mapping. So basically now, previously this M, which is, I mean, the logical address was 15. The, uh, this logical address uh, 15 was mapped to physical page address 12. But now uh, 15 is mapped to 17. So we need to update that. So we should also somehow realize uh, the backward mapping. So we usually, I mean, in mapping table, we keep the logical page address to physical page address mapping. But we should also know the mapping from physical page address to logical page address. And for that, we usually keep that metadata in, in actually in the page data. So we have out of bound uh, space in each page that we can keep some metadata information inside the flash. And using that information, we can actually see uh, what was the logical, what is the logical page address for this uh, physical page address. So with that, we access the mapping table and we update the, basically the new position. And after that, basically we can erase block tree and uh, update the status table that Block three has all three uh, pages. So we should also note that block erasure and a status update is done just before programming a new page to the block, which call it lazy erase. So due to the, I mean, open block problem that we already talked about, the, we are not gonna erase block three and make it open block uh, immediately. So once we need it, I mean, uh, we will do that uh, later. Of course, it's good to predict that and do it in advance a bit, 
just to make sure that you don't, uh, you know, add that erase latency to the critical pass. But I mean, uh, that's also important that you don't uh, do it immediately uh, and make that block open uh, because I mean, this, uh, you will have some reliability issues. Okay. So let's quickly see some performance issues of garbage collection. So garbage collection significantly affects SSD performance. So we have high latency. Imagine because I mean large block size of modern NAND flash memories, and uh, you can assume that the block contains uh, 576 pages. And if we assume that only five percent of the pages in the victim block are valid, I mean this is kind of an example to show you basically how. Uh, expensive is uh, garbage collection. So if we can assume that the, uh, the sensing for read time is uh, 100 microseconds and program latency is 700 microseconds and erase is uh, five milliseconds. So the number of pages to copy is uh, 576 pages times 5%, which is um, around 28 pages. So you need to copy 28 pages in this particular example. And so the garbage collection latency would be something larger than uh, 28 copy, which is TR plus T program, plus T erase, which is around uh, 27 milliseconds. So orders of magnitude larger latency than T uh, read and program. And you can see that copy operation are the major contributor in this uh, example. So. It's important that FTL performs. So if FTL performs the garbage collection in an atomic manner, which means that when FTL starts garbage collection, it's not going to stop it. And it's not going to basically uh, you know, uh, service any other task. So it can delay user requests for a significantly long time. So if you, in the past, when we were profiling SSC performance, you see that, for example, the performance is I mean, good for read operation. But as soon as garbage collection is invoked, we will see drastic change uh, in, I mean, uh, over, overhead or change in late read latency. So, which is quite important uh, that modern SSC try to avoid that, and we see how. And it causes, basically, as I said, long tail latencies that you have performance fluctuation, and noisy neighbor, which is a fairness issue when a read dominant workload is working, I mean, is running uh, together with a write intensive workload. So that write intensive workload may cause uh, significant garbage collection invocations. And, in, and all of these uh, can cause uh, read latency overhead for the read dominant workload. So you can see that this we have, we have, we, now we have a noisy neighbor that the, that the read dominant workload does not issue garbage collection tasks, but because of the neighbor, uh, another application that is, causes a lot of writes, this uh, poor application also needs to have a uh, low performance rate. So this is quite also important to avoid that. So how to avoid uh, these issues? We have some uh, mitigation techniques. We will see also one more uh, today, but these are uh, some of them. The trim command, which is in, uh, implemented in that uh, OS level, this is to inform FTL of deletion and deallocation of a logic block. So basically, whenever in your uh, OS you, for example, delete a file, if you don't uh, let uh, SSD know about that, that that file is deleted, SSD may consider that as a valid page or several valid pages. I mean, uh, depending on how large your block, your file is, and then uh, whenever it wants to do garbage collection, it needs to copy all the uh, pages for that file, but. With this trim command, you can actually inform SSC that this block, this uh, basically logical block or several logical blocks, they are already deallocated. And then uh, SSC can consider them as invalid uh, pages. And whenever it wants to do garbage collection, SSC does not need to, or FDL does not need to copy those pages. So that trim is quite essential for SSDs. So, Another uh, way to uh, mitigate the, the performance issue of uh, garbage collection is to implement background GC. So with that, you need to exploit SSC idle time, and you do and you schedule garbage collection tasks when your SSC is idle. So with that, actually, you need to have a technique or mechanism to accurately predict SSC idle time. 
And uh, so there are several books that they are doing that using machine learning technique or some heuristic technique that they try to predict uh, idle time soon enough such that they can basically, uh, uh, you know, the schedule uh, garbage collection. But it also has some issue like you may actually uh, have some, uh, you know, false prediction that uh, you mispredict the idle time and you schedule garbage collection and then your assistant needs to uh, service some requests and you have some issues, performance issues. And another issue is that you may have some premature GC. So some pages that you are copying in during this uh, background GC, they could have been invalidated by the host system if you were doing GC at the exact time. So since you are doing uh, GC in the background or soon, sooner than needed, you may uh, end up copying some pages that they will be also invalidated in the future. This is also one problem that some prior work show uh, about uh, this background GC. Another important way to do is uh, to improve uh, the, then to reduce the overhead of GC is to use progressive GC. So basically you don't do garbage collection tasks in an atomic manner. So you divide GC process into subtasks. And uh, so if you, for example, in that previous example, if you need to copy 28 pages, you basically copy one page. And then if there is a request from the host, you will service one request. So, and with that, you can copy one page, service user request, and then you need to, I mean, imagine you do it for uh, 28 times. So this is quite effective at decreasing tail latency. And you can see if you, when you profile modern SSD performance, you don't see drastic change in the uh, read latency when, when they have garbage collection tests. So probably in modern SSDs, uh, they are already implemented uh, these uh, progressive GC and, and all of these mitigations also. Okay, so any question so far? So until now, we consider that uh, actually uh, the mapping uh, in garbage collection is uh, similar. So at the OS level, when we have four kilobyte pages, at the SSC level, we also have uh, pages with four, four kilobyte address. But we want to actually, but this is not the case in modern SSC most of the time. So we have IO mismatch between uh, OS and NAND flash. The page size, which is minimum IO unit of NAND flash, has uh, con continuously increased in order to have lower area overhead and higher bandwidth. So in the very, very beginning, uh, page size was 256 bytes, but nowadays uh, SSDs, most of the time, I mean, capacity, capacity optimized SSDs, they have uh, 16 kilobyte pages. There are some performance optimized SSDs that they use uh, smaller pages, like two or four kilobytes, but most of the SSD that you are seeing in market, they are using 16 kilobyte pages now. But the logical block or sector size of five system is actually four kilobyte nowadays. So increasing the block size in OS is not straightforward because I mean, IO handling is also closely related to OS memory management. So the page uh, address, page size in OS memory management is usually I mean, four kilobyte. So you don't want to also to increase uh, the, the sector size or logical uh, block size of the file system. And uh, if you actually also make it larger, you may end up unnecessary fetch or eviction at the page cache because, so you, whenever you are accessing uh, SSC, you will read uh, more data. I mean, accessing, uh, you will read 16 kilobytes, for example. And then uh, you may also end up not using some of these pages and you need to basically, uh, uh, you know, you, you just uh, uh, sacrifice some of your uh, throughput for the, for unnecessary read. And also, uh, since you are using uh, uh, me memory with more uh, lar larger pages, then you may also end up um, less you know, area for other pages and you need to evict uh, some of these pages. So basically, uh, it's not, there is actually a trade-off depending on your workload that uh, how much uh, you, it's good to increase the page size for the logical block. But, but I mean, uh, usually in our uh, new uh, modern file systems like AXT4 or FDFS in Windows, uh, we, they are, we are using four kilobyte uh, page address, page size. So now you have actually a small, uh, can have this problem. 
small write request. So you may uh, receive requests that you want to write to four kilobytes, but you're actually uh, pages in SSE 16 kilobytes. So let's see how we can actually deal with that issue. So imagine the mapping table that you are uh, having is uh, here is mapped for 16 kilobytes for now. So this is the logical uh, page address to physical page address. And you want to, uh, the, your request is logical block address four and size is one. So you want to write only one sector and the data is eight. So if you open the, basically the address, you will see something like that. And basically if we have 16 kilobyte pages and the physical and the, and the OS level or host level page address is four kilobyte. So you will use the, 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 the first two, I mean, the least significant piece of the address as the offset, four kilobyte offset. So now the block address is here, which is one. So with that, you access the logical uh, page address in your mapping table. So you will access this zero, zero one because this page number is one. And then, uh, so you map this logical page address to physical page address zero. And then you just, you write data A in the first position because the offset is also zero, zero. So this is the, offset zero position. So then later on, you receive another write request to address uh, one and the size is two. So you want to write two data, B and uh, C. So when you write this address in a uh, binary format, you will see that the page numbers is actually zero, but the offset is zero one. So you want to actually write uh, two pages, B and C, in page number, I mean, logical page number zero. And the start point, which is the offset is zero one, which is, I mean, you, so you can have the offset zero, one, two, or three. So in the, in the mapping table, there is no entry. So basically you will uh, allocate another uh, physical page address and you will write B and C to that. So, now we have some questions. Basically why we uh, write B and C at the middle of the pages. So I guess the answer to that is quite easy because I mean, we want to keep the four kilobyte offset. So since uh, B start at offset zero one, we actually write B and C in the exact disposition. And that can reduce the overhead for mapping table and mapping table serves only the index of the 16 kilobyte pages. Why not using the unused space in the physical page? So in the physical page zero, zero, we already have unused space. So why we cannot use uh, that to write B and C? And the answer is that basically this uh, physical page address zero has uh, already mapped to logical pages uh, from four, address four to seven. So remember that the previous write that you received, the address was, the address was uh, zero four, right? And when we write this address in binary format, we see that the page number is one. And we map that address four to this physical page address zero. So we don't, we, uh, we don't uh, only map this address. We actually map address uh, four, five, six, and seven to this uh, page. So basically you cannot use that for to write B and C. Okay. So later on you receive another uh, write request, which you want to write it to address seven and the data is D. So when you write the address in binary format, you see that the page number is one and the offset is three. So if you query the mapping table, you actually see that, oh, there is a mapping information for this logical page address one, but the physical and the physical page address is zero. So can we use this slot to write our data? The answer is that not likely. The reason is that basically due to data randomization, uh, cells in the unused space have been already programmed. I would say uh, may have been already programmed. So you should 
for the for the improvement you may also program it and also for, to better reliability and also we have this program order constraint so since we have already a uh, right to the next page uh, for data b and c if you actually uh, access the page uh, zero and write data again to it you uh, you uh, you, you are not obeying this program uh, order constraint, which is quite important to obey for MLC or TLC or QLC. You can actually, uh, uh, yeah, you relax this constraint when you are using SLC SSDs. But for MLC or TLC or QLC, you have to use uh, this. You have to obey this rule. So basically, yeah, you cannot write in this in this slot, and these are unused. It's a lot, but we need to, we have to discard them actually. And then uh, you need to, uh, yeah, uh, basically you need to write uh, A and this uh, D in a new page. So you need to basically read A and modify also this page with the uh, new data D that you have. And then you write back A and D to a new address. And then you need to update this mapping table. OK, so we are seeing that a small writes cause read, modify, write. And uh, basically, waste uh, PE cycles plus additional read operation, which is, has performance and lifetime degradation. So in order to deal with this issue, modern SSDs use fine grain mapping using page buffer. So. This is quite simple. So what we are doing is that, although physical page address is 16 kilobyte, uh, we can we keep the mapping per four kilobyte. So you have you have this option to address each single four kilobyte in your page. So now when you are receiving this address uh, zero, I mean uh, address four. You actually uh, check the logical page address for because you don't need to retrieve the block address now because your mapping table is uh, is kept by page addresses now and page I mean the host page address. So you access these uh, zero four and then uh, and you write this uh, data A to the page buffer and you update the physical page address. You can also update it later, but yeah, uh, we can also update it that we, we are planning to write this data A to physical page address zero, but we may uh, actually write it later because we want to. So the idea is that since flash ship page is 16, we want to have the page buffer full of data. I mean, it's 16 kilobyte of data. And once we have 16 kilobyte of data in page buffer, then we flush out the page buffer to the flash ship such that then you can actually have a uh, one shot write in 16 kilobyte granularity. So the next data that you receive, I mean, the next request, for example, you want to write it in address one and the size is two and the, the address the data is B and C. So again, you check the logical page address, the mapping table zero one, and then you map it also to this uh, physical page address zero one, and you write B and C data in the page buffer. And for the logical, uh, the next request, logical block address zero seven, you also check this uh, mapping table and write this data D to the page buffer. And you map this uh, zero uh, address seven to address three uh, in physical. So now we have this uh, page buffer full. We flush it to the to the block, and you have this A B C D one page right. So you can see that with fine grain mapping, we significantly reduce the number of NAND flash operations. So in the previous example, we had three writes plus one read, but now we have only one write, and uh, which is quite uh, interesting. But of course, it's not free. So fine grain mapping has some also drawbacks. So we need larger mapping table. Uh, so in the so if you keep the mapping table for 16 kilobyte pages, you would have four bytes per 16 kilobyte page. 
And uh, the overhead of this, so the storage capacity that you need for DRAM is basically 0.025%. But for four kilobyte mapping, you need to store four bytes per four kilobyte page. And because of that, the overhead or the storage you need is 0.1% uh, of the total SSD. So as an example, for a two terabyte SSD, you need at least two gigabyte data. Uh, and I mean, nowadays SSDs, they are quite I mean, larger. They can be 16, I don't know, 32. And for example, for 16 terabyte SSD, you need 16 kilobyte, uh, gigabyte uh, DRAM. So you can see that this DRAM is getting larger and larger. And this increases the SSD price and power and energy consumption. And uh, another issue is that, so you need to also have data durability of written data. So data that they are written in the page buffer. Uh, so because page buffer usually implemented with uh, vo volatile memories like SRAM or data. So the data that uh, have been written in that, you should make sure that you don't uh, lose the data in, uh, when, when we have sudden power off because DRAM or SRAM, they are volatile memory. So to, yeah, to cope this challenge, basically SSD use power capacitors such that when we have this southern power off, the SSD and uh, those capacitors, they can uh, provide enough charge uh, just to make sure that you can uh, do this de-staging uh, operation and you copy back the data or flush the data that you have in the DRAM. Or actually, it's, there are also some uh, uh, SSDs nowadays that they are also using uh, non-volatile memory for this page buffer. So they are using, for example, SLC uh, page buffer. So in SSD, we, they have kind of, you know, DRAM-based page buffer, which is a small, but they have also a bigger page buffer, which is uh, using SLC uh, flash, and they, they have also TLC and QLC for storing data. So yeah, so when you, when you are using SLC or non-volatile memory for this uh, page buffer, you don't have this overhead of basically uh, the power of, um, the overhead of uh, adding extra capacitors. Okay. By the way, but I mean, despite non negligible drawbacks of uh, fine grain mapping, basically this uh, fine grain mapping is widely used in modern SSDs because it has huge benefit and it's quite important for enterprise SSDs that we want to have good performance. Okay, any question so far? Do you have any questions, Zoom, Rakesh? Uh, you mean uh, YouTube? Oh, sorry, YouTube, yes. No, no questions. Okay, great. Okay, so now let's uh, briefly talk about multi-plane operation every block management. So. When I was talking about uh, garbage collection, uh, I mentioned that we can have different policies. Uh, one, the simple policy is the greedy one that you basically choose the block that you have with uh, the highest number of invalid pages. But there are also some other policies that you should, or there are also some other trade-offs that you should be aware of that in order to improve the performance of garbage collection and also the, many, the block management task. So, you know, you are aware of this multi plane operation that basically we can do uh, parallel writes or parallel reads to planes. But the constraint is that this is uh, only for the same operations on the same page offset. So, for example, here you can see that when the, so th that's because of the, you know, that because they, they share the decoder address. So, when we have this, uh, for example, read operation to word line K. If we want to, I mean, have this read operation for all planes at the same time, it should be possible. So you can actually apply V reference uh, to that word like word line K, and other word lines should have V pass, and then you can have multi-plane read operation. Similarly, you can have also multi-plane write operation. So to perform as many multi-plane operations as possible. Basically, uh, in, in page buffer, we keep a number of uh, playing pages. And then at, when, when the page buffer uh, is full of the uh, number of playing pages, we then we can flush the page buffer. So with that example, so basically when you are receiving uh, one 
write operation to that uh, to uh, to the to plane zero, for example, you don't uh, flush page buffer. You you wait for more writes, and when the page buffer is full, you basically flush the page buffer, and using multi-plane write operation. And you can actually keep going, uh, doing that, and with that you can have better uh, write performance using multi-plane operation. But this means that uh, you need to keep the right points of all planes to be the same, meaning that the right, the open block in plane zero should actually uh, be the same as, I mean, the, the offset should be the same as open block in plane one and plane two and plane zero, such that you can do that. And for that, basically, we have this inform uh, definition of super block based block management. So you don't uh, manage your block at plane level you actually manage your blocks at several planes. And also you can move further and also consider several dice or several chips uh, to, for the definition of super block. So uh, let's see how does it actually affects the garbage collection. As a very, again, quick recap for reducing the performance overhead of garbage collection uh, for the greedy policy, the FDL select the block with the largest number of invalid pages. So in this situation, in this plane, we have block N block, and you can see that uh, different block, they have different number of invalid pages. So block two has the highest number of uh, invalid pages. So it's selected as a victim block, and we need to copy uh, valid pages to the block open block or right uh, point of this plane. And then we can uh, basically erase block two and uh, block two and block uh, N minus uh, one is actually the active block or right point for now. But uh, later on, when it's uh, when, it, when it gets full, we can actually use block two. We can erase block two and use it for the next active block. So, but now imagine that basically in our SSC flash we or in our die we have two planes. So. You can see that we now we have the different number of uh, invalid pages in any of these blocks. So when you want to basically, uh, if we can, if you want to use this greedy policy. So in plane one, uh, the block two has the largest number of invalid pages. And in plane zero block, uh, sorry, in plane zero, block two has the largest number of invalid pages, and in plane one, uh, block one has the largest. So we select them as the victim block, and we need to copy uh, these data to the right point. So, yeah, these uh, show the copy. Right. So basically, we we should do single plane read from block two in plane zero. And here also we need to do single plane read, but then actually you can do multi-plane write. So you do two single plane read and uh, store it in the, in, the, in the row buffer or in the, in the DRAM. And then basically you, uh, you can use multi-plane write to write uh, these uh, data in parallel in, two, in plane zero and plane one. Then you have, uh, so for block uh, one in plane one, you don't need more uh, copy, but uh, for, for block two in plane zero, you still need to do two more copies. So basically you have, you will do two single plane reads more and two single plane writes more. So for four page copy, so we, we have to copy three pages in block two and two, and one page in block one. So in total, we had four page copy. So in an ideal case, it can be done with uh, only two multi-plane reads and two multi-plane writes, right? But what we did is uh, basically we had in total four single plane reads, one multi-plane write and two single plane writes. So yeah. And that's one issue that basically we couldn't uh, leverage uh, the multiplane operation well here in this example, because we didn't make the block uh, ready for that or aware of the, that in the beginning also. But uh, in fact, actually that's also, we need more, uh, we also have more issues. 
So we cannot perform multi-plane operations in new right points unless we discard the second and third pages of block uh, n minus one in plane one. So you can see that in uh, in block n minus one in plane zero, the the first three pages has already been used, but in plane one we only use the first page. So if you want to uh, enjoy your multi-plane operation, you have to actually discard uh, the the second and third pages in block n minus one in plane one, and then you can actually use multi-plane operation. So that's something also to uh, consider. And in the future, when we are done with playing uh, basically block n minus one, and the new right point is actually block two in plane zero and block one in plane one. So basically we cannot perform multi-plane rights for future rights due to the different offset. So yeah, because of that, it's actually important to make FDL aware of multi-plane operation and do that um, um, block management in the beginning such that you can keep using that for future rights. So in order to uh, mitigate this, I mean, cope to this challenge, we use super block management. So we group uh, each block with the same index, uh, vertical position in different planes. So yeah, here, for example, block one in plane zero and plane one, we call consider a super block. So with that, basically your victim uh, block, you will, you need to, uh, I mean, again, we can actually extend our greedy policy, but in a super block. So you count the number of, uh, invalid, uh, the number of invalid pages is in your super block. So basically, uh, yeah, here, for example, we have uh, in total in this super block, we have three invalid pages. But in this block, we have nine invalid pages. Here we have eight and so on and so forth. So we can see that the super block one has the highest number of invalid pages and we can select them. So the, when we want to do the copy here, so you need to have five single read operation. And for this one, these two, you can actually use uh, multi-plane read because they are in the same offset. So for to copy valid pages, you need to do five single reads and one uh, multi-plane read. And when we want to copy, uh, when we want to write valid pages to the to super block n minus one, we can actually use uh, three multi-plane uh, writes. And we just need to buffer the, we can also buffer the risk and wait for the future data such that we can keep using uh, multi-plane, right? And the thing, the good thing is that we actually keep performing multi-plane writes because, so in the new block n minus one, uh, we can uh, use multi-plane writes. And for future, when block n minus one is full, we actually uh, erase super block one. And then you can still use also multi-plane writes. So that's the pros. But as a cons, uh, sometimes you need to actually do more read and write operations. So here in this example, for example, we did five single reads, single plane reads, and one uh, multi-plane read plus three multi-plane writes. But uh, in the previous example that we didn't consider this uh, multi-plane operation, we have to do uh, basically four single uh, plane reads, one multi-plane writes, and two single plane writes. So there is actually a clear trade-off. But uh, I would say that mostly in uh, modern SSC FTS, they are trying to keep using a multi-plane operation in the block management. So it's quite important that they are working at the super block level. And that super block even actually uh, can you can, it's, it's, it's actually goes further. It's not only in one uh, die, it can, it can be also considered across several dies and several also chips and packages. So yeah, basically multiplane operation can significantly improve SSC performance, but as we said, it requires proper management in FDA. Okay, so any question?
Okay, so if there is no more question, I guess uh, we are done with today's topic. And thanks everyone for joining today's lecture and see you all next week. Thank you. Bye.